Welcome back. Well, Omicron has certainly changed the game, hasn't it? As cases skyrocket, our thinking about how to tackle the disease, both in terms of policy and our personal lives, has had to adjust, leaving some big questions about what we thought we knew. So joining us right now to sort through some of those questions, Dr. Danielle Martin and Dr. Zane Chagla here for another round of questions. Uh, hey, Dr. Martin, maybe I'll start with you with some practical information about how to deal with COVID or suspected COVID illness. I mean, given how contagious Omicron is, how do you approach someone, for example, in your household who's sick? What would you do? Right, so the first thing is, uh, in a perfect world, of course, we would all be able to get a test at the first sign of a symptom, but we're not in that world right now. It's, it can be very difficult for people to access testing. If you have any symptom that you think might be COVID-19 or anyone in your household has a symptom that you think might be COVID-19, you need to isolate. So anyone who you've uh, been together with in close contact without a mask uh, in the last few days, you need to let them know because they would also be considered a close contact for you. And you mentioned symptoms a few times now. Can you remind us what do the symptoms actually look like now? Because there has been something of a, an evolution there, right? That's right. It's been changing partly because the, the virus keeps changing and also because most of us have now had uh, vaccines. And so uh, it does tend to be a, a more mild presentation. Uh, so still a sore throat, cough, shortness of breath, uh, loss of, tense, of t uh, sense of taste or smell are all uh, continue to be common symptoms. And of course, um, some people may still experience the more classic symptoms we think of with COVID-19, such as high fever, uh, muscle pains all over their body, and just that general low energy that you feel when you've really been uh, knocked down a by a viral illness. Dr. Chagla, you know, with the strain on, on PCR testing, rapid tests might be the only di diagnostic tool that families have, but how should we be interpreting those results? Yeah, I mean, look, a positive test in, in the reality of what's going on today is a positive test and you should interpret it as a positive test. Don't go for PCR, call yourself positive, take a picture, you know, document it, um, but, you know, treat it as a positive. A negative test really doesn't mean a ton these days. And, and for a couple of reasons, one, you know, there is some studies suggesting the sensitivity of these tests with Omicron has gone down. But secondly, you know, we I've certainly seen people where uh, the disease, you know, really, really turns on quickly, where people have very minimal symptoms or no symptoms, and the next day they're fulminantly symptomatic with a negative test that turns to a positive test. Uh, and so, you know, it is a small snapshot in time if it's negative. It's still not, it's still hard to rule out COVID even in that context if you're using it for kind of a social gathering or that type of thing. Um, but, you know, it, it certainly is a, a reasonable test to trust when it's positive, especially in someone that's having symptoms. Have you, have you heard of uh, folks improvising, Dr. Chagla, with these rapid tests? I mean, I, you know, using it to swab your throat and then your, your nasal passages Presumably that might lead to a more accurate result. Is there any truth to that? Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's a lot going on in social media. There's there's case reports that are going on. There may be a bit more of this upper respiratory tract uh, 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 reservoir for it. And, and so you might have higher levels in the throat. You really do want to follow the instructions on the kits, though. And, and that's an important thing, right? Not all kits are meant to do saliva. It may inactivate the test. Uh, and so you really, really want to make sure that that's within the guidelines of your kit. Otherwise, you may get a negative result uh, when you're, you know, aiming to get a positive result and, and make it, uh, you know, make it uh, uh, behavioral changes mm. based on that. Uh, Dr. Martin, how far have we come on the treatment front? Well, things are accelerating really quickly, and that's another reason why it would be good to slow this wave if we can. Uh, so that we can get uh, infrastructure in place to treat especially those more frail people who are more likely to have severe illness. So um, processes are being set up across the country for monoclonal antibody uh, therapy for those who would need it or would qualify for it. Um, in primary care, which is where most of us will get treated with COVID-19 uh, if and when we get it, uh, there are lots of uh, treatments available. So certainly anyone who's got a cough or any respiratory symptom will benefit from a puffer. There's actually an antidepressant medication that can be prescribed by your primary care provider that's been shown in combination with that puffer to uh, help people with mild COVID in the community. So if you feel really pretty well 
and you have mild symptoms, you just need to take good care of yourself and try to not pass the virus to anybody else. If you're feeling a little sicker, or if you have any chronic diseases that mean that you're a little bit more worried about the effect of, of this on your health, you should reach out to your family doctor or primary care provider because there are prescriptions that can help to manage that more uh, mild illness in the community. And then, of course, for people who get more significantly sick, uh, there are more pills coming and uh, IV therapies coming uh, that we need a little bit more time to get organized for people. Coping in the age of Omicron. Uh, Dr. Martin, Dr. Chagla, thank you so much for your time. Helpful as always. Thanks, Andy. No problem.